Treating your hull to keep it clear of fouling will reduce drag under sail, improve fuel efficiency, and make your boat much more responsive when maneuvering. It also prevents the transfer of invasive marine wildlife. The type of anti-fouling product to use depends on your hull material, where and how you use your boat, and how often you plan to maintain the underwater coating. To help you choose the right product, there's plenty of information available in manufacturers' brochures and marine magazines, and from staff at boatyards and chandleries. But to further help you, this useful safety video has been funded by the British Coatings Federation's Marine Coatings Group and is part of a wider DIY safe anti-fouling initiative. It contains practical hints and tips and health and safety advice for those planning to anti-foul their own boats. So look out for our poster campaign, our free guidance document and trifold leaflet all of which include a simple checklist of do's and don'ts for a successful job. Please read the guidance document before starting. Because of the hazardous nature of most anti-foul coatings, wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, is essential. As a minimum, you need coveralls, eye protection, a face mask, a hat or hood, and appropriate disposable nitrile rubber gloves. Sturdy work boots are also required, and when working with solvent-based paints, cartridge respirators with appropriate filters are recommended. Like many practical jobs on boats, forethought and good preparation are key. Make sure that you read and understand the paint labelling, data sheets and product information before starting, and that you have all the PPE you need. Follow manufacturer's guidelines and observe health and safety recommendations at all times. Most boatyards offer a pressure wash service. Check whether your chosen boatyard has abundant catchment area to capture traces of old anti-fouling and washings in a safe and environmentally responsible way. In this video, for example, we've used the excellent and environmentally responsible facilities provided by Deacon's Boatyard in Swanwick, Hampshire. You should anti-foul outdoors in a safe and secure location, not in a busy or public place, such as a car park. With the boat lifted out of the water and any old fouling removed by jet wash or scrubbing, you should locate it on a hard standing impermeable surface and use a suitable tarpaulin or cover to capture any scrapings. Choose a dry day, not too cold or frosty and with as little wind as possible and try to avoid early morning or early evening when dew might be a problem. Ensure pets, children or bystanders do not come close to the working area and avoid food or drink whilst working. Inspect the hull for any obvious signs of wear and treat any serious issues such as osmosis professionally before proceeding. Any loose or flaking antifoul can be scraped or wet sanded back with 60 or 80 grit wet and dry paper but dry sanding is not recommended. If you want to completely remove several layers of old anti-fouling, then gel coat friendly chemical removers are useful, as is professional soda blasting, but never use a blow lamp or heat gun. Scrub the water line and then rinse the hull thoroughly with fresh water. After rubbing back to remove any loose or flaking anti-foul, any bare patches can be patch primed with a suitable primer. Confirm the correct compatibility of your new paint system with the old coating by checking with the manufacturer's data. 
often a full barrier coat or suitable primer coat, will avoid doubt. In either case, mask off the waterline, protect external fittings and ensure a clear edge around shafts and stern drives to prevent the risk of galvanic reaction. Ensure the coating is kept at room temperature or as near as possible before use. Stir well and pour into a paint tray before re-securing the lid. To ensure a suitably thick coating is applied, use a medium pile mohair roller which will help avoid slipping across the hull. Brush application is also okay, but do not spray anti-fouling paints. Load the roller or brush fairly generously and use a small brush where you need a higher degree of accuracy, such as on the waterline. Make sure you apply extra coverage on areas such as the leading edge of your keel and rudder and just beneath the waterline. For the second and successive coats, follow the same procedures as before and observe the correct drying interval times between coats and the safe to relaunch period indicated on the tin or in product data sheets. Should anti-foul accidentally come into contact with your skin, wash the affected area immediately with warm soapy water. Don't use a solvent or paint thinner. Specialist hand wipes and purpose designed cleansers may also help. Seek medical advice if anti-fouling paint comes into contact with eyes or if you accidentally swallow the paint. Call the relevant NHS non-emergency helpline and describe the product you've been using. Now please follow our simple checklist to clean up and also follow marina and boatyard rules when disposing of waste. Wear your PPE until the cleanup and disposal process is complete. Spillages should be contained and collected with non-combustible absorbent materials such as sand or earth and disposed of as hazardous waste, as should paint-soaked rags. Don't leave them lying around in bins or in overall pockets as they are potential fire hazards. All PPE, apart from goggles, should be disposed of. Lastly, don't pour any unused anti-fouling paint or primer down the drain and don't take any contaminated equipment, half-used tins of paint or soiled PPE off-site. In particular, don't retain these in your car and then drive because the fumes given off may well impair your ability to drive safely. So in conclusion, when carrying out any form of painting or anti-fouling, think carefully about your own personal protection and that of others, and follow marina or boatyard procedure to protect the environment around you. For further information, visit safeantifouling.com.